In the UK, around 1.6 million people are unemployed. I've tried applying for every job around the area. It's just the same results all the time. Tonight, we visit some of the country's unemployment black spots. Quite a lot of vulnerable people here being taken advantage of by, by the system. And meet the people who rely on benefits to get by. At the bottom of this road, there's loads of druggies and alcoholics. The 23-year-old, desperate to find permanent work in an area with one of the highest rates of zero-hours contracts. I have debts, but I can't get out. My mind goes black, I have a black cow. There's no way to get out. The 34-year-old, from one of the UK's most deprived regions, who can't hold down a full-time job since getting out of prison. The lad did me, so I've written back and we've both got the sack for it. And the 47-year-old ex-cabbie, now unable to work and protesting about his heating bills by sleeping in his car. Good night, I'll speak to you in the morning. In the northeast of England, Teesside is one of the hardest places in the UK to find work. 34-year-old unemployed Sean has lived here all his life. This is my uh, living room where I just sit and chill. That's my kitchen. As you can see, it's just all in one. Sean lives in the town of Stockton-on-Tees in a privately rented flat for £60 a week, paid for by benefits. I'm going into the bathroom. It's all right, I just need a lot of repairs doing. And that's my bedroom, as you can see. I, that's just my, where all my junk goes, really, my clothes and stuff. It's too cold as well. That's why I don't sleep in there. I just watch it telling and curl up on the sofa. While he's happy he has his own flat, Sean's not so happy with the location. At the bottom of this road, there's loads of druggies and alcoholics. It's tempting to mix in with it, and I just don't want to end up going on to the hard drugs and stuff like that. That's why I want to move away. But, like, I can't afford it at the minute, so I have to stay where I am. Sean's been in and out of trouble with the police since the age of 18. When I was younger, I wanted to be a footballer, but it didn't happen. I mixed in with the wrong crowd, and then I didn't start getting into trouble to know I was about 18 year old, and then it's just been on and off since then. Driving offences and stuff like that. I went to prison for carrying a knife outside of a nightclub, which was my own fault, as I didn't realise that I had the knife in my pocket at the time. Now, he wants to turn his life around. Hopefully get married one day and get a, like, a job, so I can treat her right and stuff. Oh, I want to settle down now, stop getting into trouble. If I didn't knock about with the wrong people, then I wouldn't have got into trouble. I'd have had like, a good job and a decent wage. And... But because of my uh, criminal record, it's hard to get work now. In the past, while he was in and out of trouble, Sean was also on and off benefits. I've never found a long-term job. That's what I want to do, really, get a long-term job so I don't have to go back on the door. Four months ago, things were looking up for Sean when he got a full-time job in a local supermarket. But he says he got the sack when he got into a fight outside the entrance. The lad hit me, so I went and back and, like, I went in the next day and, like, told them that I, I got jumped in and the lad hit me and we both got the sack for it. Uh, he tried to say that I pinched his bike, which I didn't. Despite having failed to ever hold down a job, Sean has now decided what he wants to do and he set his sights on getting work on the railways. I just want to work on the trucks. Uh, work with the cables on the trucks. The North West has the UK's second highest number of people employed on zero hours contracts. In Ashton Underline on the outskirts of Manchester, 23-year-old Leon has been in and out of zero-hours contracts and on and off benefits since he left school. Currently, out of work, he's desperate to find a stable job. I've tried applying for every job around the area, including up the main road, um, into main town, and it's just the same results all the time. But I'm not going to go without a fight. I'm going to give everything I've got to basically get a job where I can stay in and know I've got a regular income, basically. 
Zero hour contracts mean Leon doesn't get guaranteed work when he is in work. When I get a job on an agency, I think, oh, it's, it's my time to get my head down and work now. And it's zero hour contracts, which I've signed for. I know I'm fully aware, but I don't understand how I can still be getting sent home 13 hours a week, which I'm expecting to at least 40 hours a week. So that's where it does mess me up a lot. He's in over a £1,000 of debt, having found it difficult to manage the bills because he's never had a regular wage. Um, the main debts is my rent arrears, council tax and the water bills. I've been fighting to pay them off, which has been very difficult for me. Leon was born and bred in ashton under -Lyne and lives in a one-bedroom flat. Almost a third of the crime in the area is antisocial behaviour. I haven't got many mates because they've all took the wrong roads. They're on a lot of like legalised spies and stuff. I don't want to go down that path. And the only decent mate is Daniel here next to me. Um, we're there to support each other and get through hard and difficult times. Since we've known each other that long, you know, it's like we're brothers, not friends at the end of the day. Up until a month ago, Leon and Daniel were both working on zero hours contracts, packing sausages at a factory. But after nine weeks, they got the sack when they phoned in sick at the same time. We was never off, we was never off. It was just that once. And we're on that zero-hour contract. They can get rid of us whenever they like. Out of work again, Leon signed back on at the job centre. But while waiting for his payment to come through, he's getting deeper into debt. Still waiting for our job centre payment. Since we've left work, we've still had no money since then. My rent rates start going back up, my council tax, water, gas and electric starts going in emergency, the cupboards start getting empty, I start getting hungry, I start getting moody because I'm annoyed because I'm not getting somewhere where I actually want to be. Daniel beatbox with a surround sound, surround sound, surround around the sound. When I'm in town, met your bird, let her down. With no job to go to, and with money a constant worry, Leon vents his frustrations in lyrics, which he turns into raps. When I've got all this stress on my mind and stuff, and I beatbox or do lyrics, I'm doing the beatbox and I'm doing the lyrics, but I'm not thinking about what's gone on. It's taking my mind off things to, you know, feel more relaxed himself, and it does work. I have debts that I can't get out. My mind goes black, I have a black cow. There's no way to get out. It's like I'm escaping, but I can't get away. I need to think straight, think in the right way, because if I don't, then I'm gonna go straight to the bottom of the ground. Not gonna get up, no help from anyone around. Leon's determined his life won't be like this forever. <clears throat> Intense mic. I do want a permanent job and get me head down and improve myself in life and get me head straight and go on holidays and stuff. But first of all, I need to get a job without a zero-hour contract. I'm not picky, I'm not choosy, I just want to work. Knowlesley in Merseyside, the second most deprived local authority in the whole of England. <laughs> it's home to proud Liverpoolian Mark. Liverpool's always been about the people, not about corporates or nothing like that. It's always been, we're there for the people and we support the people. He's a former taxi driver and history tour guide who's lived in Liverpool all his life. I used to love doing the uh, minibus history tours around Liverpool and showing them the hidden gems that the city has got and the diversity we've got within our history. Mark suffered with poor health for over 15 years, including sciatica, diabetes, and mobility issues. But three years ago, an angina attack forced him to stop working and he's relied on unemployment and support allowance ever since. Initially, I lost my licence. Uh, the DVLA intervened and took it off me. They've reinstated it all. Uh, but at this stage, it's medical reasons why I can't return to work. He lives on the top floor of a 15-storey tower block. but the lift only goes to the 14th floor. And he struggles with the one flight of stairs to get in and out of his flat. Yeah, the biggest issue I have is going up because I'm putting pressure on my hip and that's 
Well, it's quite painful. He's desperate to move into a lower floor flat, but says the housing association aren't helping. It's an empty property. It's been empty for a couple of months, but I'm not allowed to have it. The house would make a major difference to me. Sometimes he's in too much pain to walk the stairs and is left housebound. And it's quite often days when I can't get out. I'll just sit and just look out. Uh, and the views are, you know, you pay a lot of money for them. I love the area. Uh, it's peaceful and the people are really nice. It's just the location to flat, unfortunately, for me, doesn't work. As well as struggling with the stairs, Mark's having problems affording the heating system since the Housing Association installed a new system. My money SA, I can afford £20 a week towards the heating. Uh, if I needed to put it on, so I had the heating on full time, I'd need 50 to 60 and I haven't got that type of income. We're sitting here with um, woolly, woolly hats on and woolly jumpers and later on the blanket comes out, you know. He thinks the cost of the new heating system is too high, so to draw attention to the issue, he's staging a protest by sleeping in his car. This is what I, I, I would do of an evening time just to try and get the directors to come to a table. So I'd normally get into my car, make sure I'm covered up nicely, and it'd be good night, I'll speak to you in the morning. Anybody got a spare teddy bear? But the demonstration didn't go as well as he'd hoped. It was hard to sleep in the car. It was really cold. The Liverpool Echo actually came down, took some photos, and on the second night I did it, I actually was taken away by ambulance. I was in hospital overnight. They then warned me not to, so I've actually backed down from it on medical advice. Coming up, Sean's got onto a course which could lead to his dream job. But is he too sick to go? I've got a tooth here. I was going to throw it up saying that I couldn't go, but I've been up all night with my tooth. Leon's preparing for the month ahead without an income. But that's just to keep us going if we haven't actually got anything to eat or a lot of electric, you know, five, ten minutes in the microwave. And Mark's hitting the roads again to see if he's still got what it takes to be a tour guide. One of the most historic things in this area is this is where he used to film Brookside. That's terrible for the cab driver, isn't it? I've just took, I took an early turn. <laughs> Look at that, look. Money that's thrown away, that could come to good use. Oh, yeah. I owe you free pee, Dan. <laughs> in Ashton Underline, unemployed 23-year-old Leon is saving every penny he can, and he's just found some on the ground. I don't look scruffy. But well, we're not being scuffy, it's money end of day, and it adds up. Last year we found £25 in ones and twos, and obviously a few five and tens and stuff. We just put it in a jar, take it to the bank, put it in the machine, it counts it all, and we had £25 between us. It gets us some more bits, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, definitely. He and unemployed friend Daniel are struggling to make ends meet since losing their jobs in a factory a month ago. They've both signed on at the job centre and are waiting for their universal credit payments to come through but aren't sure when that will be. So what are you going to do tomorrow, Danny? What's your plans? Uh, don't know, mate. There's not much to do, is it, mate? It's just the same old boring things. Can't do Being it. in the same situation and living close to each other, Leon and Daniel are virtually inseparable. We're just trying to get through together as a team. It's like a maze and we can't get out of it. And we're always running to the dead ends and we're lost. We can't get out of this situation that we're in. Right, Danny, you ready? Yeah. I'll go and get some food in. They even club together on the groceries, and today the boys are heading to the supermarket. Get some sauce and that, some noodles. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Having had no income for the past month, the first stop is the cash machine, so Leon can check how much money he has. £140. It's the last year, Mum. The last year. £140. I'll try making that last as long as possible. I'm, I'm going to have to pay count, some council tax out of that regardless. Gas and electric, I've got to pay for the internet so I can do my job search. But, uh, hopefully, it will last me until we get paid. Leon withdraws £50 of the £140 he has to his name. So I'm starving, mate. I need to start eating properly, but we can't at the moment, can we? 
Half an hour later, the shopping's done. We got a bit more than we expected, didn't yeah. we? Back at home, Leon has put £20 aside for gas and electricity, but still has money left. I haven't actually spent the full £50. I've, actually, I've still got £10 left over. Um, I've just got a few bits and bats to keep us going. Having been on and off benefits all of his life, he's used to having to plan ahead for the month when it comes to food, which means stocking up on frozen meals. This is like for when we're hungry and we actually haven't got nothing in. Like, end of the month, we'll use stuff like this. But that's just to keep us going if we haven't actually got anything to eat or a lot of electric and, it's, you know, five, ten minutes in the microwave. In Knowsley, Merseyside. Oh, that's good, that's in there. 47-year-old Mark has been living off benefits since illness forced him to stop working as a cab driver and tour guide two and a half years ago. Some fruit. He says he'd love to get back to work, but feels that because of his health, it may never be possible. Tuesday, isn't it? <laughs> Couldn't remember the day then. Thank God I've got letters on for the days. So it's just some medication. Didn't then put any in. Because of his multiple illnesses, leaving the house has to be a carefully planned operation. I need to get a back support for a case of putting back out. And also, you've got to take my stick, which I put out, I can put in my rucksack. It's collapsible. It's not a gun, honest. And that's what I need to go out every day. Can't go out without it. Today, Mark feels well enough to leave his 15th floor flat. Some days on this lift, there's an hour ticket to town. He's taking a drive around some of his old tour routes. I've done it for a lot of years, 26 years. It's, it's a job I would love to return to. Anything to do with history, Liverpool, I'm the guy there. I'd love to do it. One of the most historic things in this area is this is where you film Brookside. The houses are still there, you can actually buy them. I'm not sure how much as your dashes went for, where, where you got the free body under the patio. But he's a little out of practice. Close the, the, the section up. OK, I can't get to it no more. It has been a couple of years, and we've changed the um, layout. Used to be able to get into it. Not so worried. Being a born and bred Liverpoolian, Mark has a range of landmarks up his sleeve. The tower is actually the world's first skyscraper. So many city firsts. The list is quite extensive. Everyone knows, of course, Liverpool's famous for the Beatles. It's a chocolate claim was invented just down there. <laughs> Despite still knowing the job, Mark says his health problems make returning to work seem almost impossible. I would love to be able to get into a position where I would be back in work. Um, but I can't return to work at this stage. It just wouldn't be practical. I can't travel great distances for medical reasons. In Stockton on Tees, Unemployed 34-year-old Sean is tiring of a life on benefits. He made the first day of his course on time and now has to keep it up for 14 weeks in order to gain a qualification needed to work on the railways. Been all right, we've had a laugh and that with the tutor, there, done a bit of uh, paperwork. That's all the colours what I have to like, study and like work with. There's the American version of the colour codes and like the English, the British Colour codes, as you can see, it's just the different things, different colours. And I've got some homework to do as well, study all these maths and stuff. He's positive about it, despite others already pulling out. There's about 10 people there today, but there should have been about 20, and like two people went over because they couldn't get it into the heads, all the wires and like all the information and stuff. I just hope I do pass. This isn't the first course Sean's been on. He's previously started over 20 others, including one on bike maintenance. I was on a uh, programme with the Job Centre before. It's like, it was called Cycle Task Force, where they help you ride bikes and uh, fix them. It saves me money on bus fares and stuff like that. Despite learning how to fix bikes on the course, Sean hasn't considered doing it for a job. I've never tried trying to get a job in a bike shop. Not many bike shops around, do you? 
Sean claims £557 a month in universal credit, but it's been almost a month since his last payment and he's been struggling to get by. Today, it's benefits payday and Sean's heading straight to the bank. Out of his monthly benefits, Sean owes his landlord £230. My landlord's office is just here, so I'm going to go in and pay my rent. <coughs> Sean has money automatically deducted from his benefits for loan repayments and fines for driving offences. And after he's paid his rent, he's left with just £100 to live off and he's not planning on saving it. I'm going back to the bank to draw the rest of my money out because I've got a limit at the cash machine where I can only draw so much out. With the last of his benefits in his pocket... Can I draw the rest of my money out? Come on, please. Cheers. He doesn't think it will stretch for the month. My money's going to last about a week, two weeks. And then I just try and borrow money. I find it difficult to like, live on benefits. You're getting paid monthly, so you have to try and work out your money to make you last. I'd rather get paid fortnightly than it was before. Despite having little to live off, Sean's heading to the game shop. Every other month, I buy a computer game, something to do, change your games. Can I have this joypad as well, please, mate? Yeah. I've just spent on uh, 11 99 on a game, a joypad. That's it, really. But back at home, there's a problem. Not having it, man. <sighs> His games console isn't working. I went and just got it off a mate. My friend gave me it downstairs. He can't use the games or gadgets. He's just spent 10% of his monthly budget on. He said the heads need cleaning or something. Something to do with the heads. He plans to use his next month's benefits payment to get it fixed. Probably be expensive. Wait until I get paid next shot and take it to the shop. It's a gift mended. Annoying. Very annoying. Coming up, the struggle to find a job is taking its toll on Leon. I do get emotional and sometimes I do cry over it because I just want the best for myself. Mark's forced to make hard decisions. It's heat or eat. I made that decision today and it was to eat. And Sean's had some bad news. He's going to be sanctioned. Probably get into my debt, borrow money left, right and centre. I'm looking forward to it like... I find life hard, I need to make it work, because if I don't, my brain will start to hurt. And I mean, with an headache, it is a pain, always in my brain, driving me insane. I don't know what In Ashton Underline, unemployed 23-year-old Leon is practising his lyrics. Go up the ladder, don't slip back down. Cause I'll be He's been out of work for over a month to get and he's desperate to find a permanent go job and get on ladder, top of his household bills. Because I'd be a jolt to myself like I'm well, I'm going to put my gas and electric on now, see how much I've got left. 83p on the electric. Earlier today, Leon topped up his gas and electricity card up with the £20 he'd budgeted for the month. £10 leaves me with £10.83. The gas is the main problem out of everything. I, I always end up in emergency with how cold it is in the flat as well. With £1.38 for debt and £3.40 for emergency credit. It's left me with £5.22p from the £10 I've just bought on then. With no job this month, Leon started to claim benefits again, but he's still waiting for the money to come through. And with no money coming in, his debts are piling up. My rent to raise in total is £830.78p. I have set an agreement up to pay £100 a week. I can't pay anything until the day I get paid. Then they expect me to survive a month with no money and struggling with gas and electric. Even when Leon is in temporary work, his wages don't cover his debts. It works me up so much, working so hard when I get a job, to see all the money go and never see it, and I can't get myself new things like furniture and carpets, you know, new cookers, 
one thing Leon felt he couldn't live without was a washing machine. I didn't like going to the laundrette because it's just not a nice place to go. So I wanted to get a washing machine to save me more money and to also make life a bit more easier. But Leon didn't have the money to buy one outright. The only way I was getting the washing machine was through a meter plan, is putting pound coins into the meter. I'm just going to put a wash on me. He signed up to a type of higher purchase agreement, whereby he must put at least £24 a month into a meter to use it. After 24 months, he'll own the machine, but will have spent over double its retail price. It's a lot of money for a washing machine. It's quite ridiculous to say it's a small drum as well. You can't really fit a lot of clothes in. So I am actually doing a lot more washes than I could actually be doing as well. With no job on the horizon and debts piling up, Leon's finding it hard to stay positive. When I wake up in the morning, I don't think about anything. I'm just in my own little world for a minute. And then I realise all these problems I've still got and I can't get rid of them. It's just the same thing every single day. And I do get emotional and sometimes I do cry over it because I just want the best for myself and I'm finding it really difficult to get my life straight forward. Back in Knowsley, 47-year-old Mark has been struggling to afford to use the heating system installed in his flat by the Housing Association. They said it was going to cost us less. It's actually costing us 600% more, and it's actually causing fuel poverty within the block that we're living in. So there's quite a lot of vulnerable people here being taken advantage of by, by the system. Mark's been protesting about the cost of the new heating system by sleeping in his car, and now he's trying to get a group campaign together to get the Housing Association's attention. He's set up a tenants' meeting in the local pub and is hoping for a big turnout. Uh, I think I'm the first. Uh, everyone's still having the tea. The last time there was about 50. Um, I'm hoping in the same region, but you don't know until it happens how much people can take. You know what I mean? But they don't realise the fight's only just starting. And if we don't pull together, we'll never get through. After half an hour of waiting, only four people have turned up, but they take no time in getting started. It's costing now seven times the amount it originally cost us. The fellow moved into the flat in three weeks ago, didn't realise how much it was going to cost him yeah. to pay it. He can only force you off the heat on three hours a day. Yeah. And he's in full-time employment. It's heat or eat. I made that decision today, and it was to eat because I couldn't afford to eat. After two hours, the tenants' meeting is still going, but it's clear there's a sense of disappointment at the turnout. Came uh, a lot more people didn't come. So they're just giving up. But unfortunately, not everyone's going to give up. In Stockton on Tees, unemployed 34-year-old Sean has recently started a telecommunications course, hoping it will lead into his dream job of cable engineering on the railways. But after two classes, Sean's finding the workload overwhelming. The course is getting really, uh, getting a bit harder, and I'm just trying to get it all into my head. I did my, uh, ma my maths and English test yesterday. I hate, I hate doing tests and stuff like that. And we were doing how to do the formal letters and cover letters and, yeah. People have quit the course already but Sean's adamant he won't be one of them. There was another two dropped out, so there was only about six of us last uh, yesterday. I'm not going to drop out, I just want to get it over and done with and see what I can pass and just hope I get my qualifications. With the course finished for the week, today he has a weekly appointment at the job centre. Half an hour later, the appointment's over, and it hasn't gone well. I'm fuming. So the, the door have just uh, told me that I've got a sanction on my claim, and now I have to claim hardship allowance. The 
Job Centre are going to sanction Sean's benefits because he recently missed a weekly appointment. But Sean is angry because he says he had a legitimate excuse. I've given my reasons. My reasons was because uh, someone kept phoning me on a withheld number and telling me that I was going to get my, my flat bombed up, blown up. So I phoned the bobbies and the advisors have phoned me to see why I didn't attend my appointment, so I've given my reasons because I was waiting for the police to come. And they haven't accepted my, uh, my reasons. The sanction will mean Sean losing £229 from his next month's benefit, almost half of his monthly claim. I'm not going to be able to have any money for no food because it's just going to go on debt straight away. Sean calls the Job Centre helpline to find out about getting a hardship allowance loan and how much that will be. I'm on the phone and waiting and waiting. After 10 minutes on hold, he's worrying his phone credit will run out. I've got a big bundle on my phone, but it takes the minutes off. Oh, yeah, that was on universal credit. But I've like, uh, been sanctioned and they've told me to uh, claim hardship allowance. They've given me the wrong number. After three different phone calls, he gets through to an advisor, but he's losing his patience. So do I have to, do I have to claim hardship allowance or not? Or would I still have to claim it after then or not? That's what I'm trying to get. That's what I'm trying to get. Would I have to or not? Sean discovers that he'll have to wait until next month when the sanction has come into force before he can take out a hardship loan. No, thanks a lot. Bye, bye, bye. He won't know how much the hardship allowance will be until then. Very good, would he? Probably get into more debt, borrowed money left, right and centre. I'm looking forward to it, like... From the community notice is born, is there? No job applications, nothing going on. No. Back in Ashton under line, 23 year old Leon and friend Daniel are heading out to see if there's any jobs in the area they haven't already applied for. You've got this job here next to us here, where I applied for cleaning in there. I've not heard anything back. Took my CV in, wore appropriate clothes. Well mannered towards the people. We've applied for, for not this one, where is it? That one over there, but yeah. they said to uh, come back in, didn't they? So yeah. I'll oh, do it online. We always get the same results, regardless if we come every day, once a month, once a year. We're still getting the same reply, which is quite frustrating, to be honest. With no luck finding a job, Leon's turned into courses to try and improve his CV, and he's recently signed up for a football coaching course with the Prince's Trust. I was a bit wary of doing it at first because I thought of a job first, really, instead of a course. I said, you know, I'll give it a try, You're not losing out on anything, but although I will be still doing job search as well. If a job comes out, I'll have to leave the course and basically start work. Despite the course starting next week, Leon's still looking for a job. Right, there, do a bit of job search with you now, lads. <sighs> Having had no luck in the local area, Leon started to search further afield. The main things I'm looking for at the moment is cleaning, pick packing, and anywhere else work and fault with truck counterbalance. If you're not going to travel, then there's not going to be an opportunity there for anyone. You've got to put that effort in. Before long, Leon spotted a job, which is just what he's been looking for, and it's not a zero hours contract. Um, yes, it's just regarding a um, job vacancy. It's saying it's the client's based in Manchester City Airport. Industrial, yes, cleaning. Okay, yeah, just yeah, that's fine. They just put me on hold at the moment. Um, they put me on to someone else. Um, it's 40 hours a week. The job is 10 miles out of Manchester, close to the city airport. So the agency wants to make sure Leon can get there without any issues, and he assures them he can. I'm going to go on Google Maps and that. Uh, it won't be a problem with getting there anyway. There'll be no problem there. The conversation's sounding positive, 
so Leon asked whether Daniel could be considered for a job too. He's wondering if there's anything going there as well. Um, yeah. we, we just need a full-time job, what we can actually rely on, because there's too many zero hour contracts and all. And, yeah. After just a few minutes on the phone, it sounds like Leon's got a job for both of them. He said there will be a job basically there for me and Daniel, uh, so we could be starting work next week, hopefully. I've always enjoyed cleaning as well. It's, it's one of the things you can actually see what you've done and you can appreciate it more. And it's like you're your own boss as well, because no one's down your neck. <laughs> Just get the job done and that's it, innit? Yeah. <coughs> to be able to text us the postcode as well, so we can get the right area. All right, thank you very much for your time. It's the good news they've been desperate for. They could be starting permanent jobs as early as next week. Yeah. Hey, Danny, respect, man. Respect. We always do this as a team, We right? do, don't we? We always hey. do things as a team. In, out of work, and hopefully this time it will be in work and stay in work. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah. With the job on the cards, it's time to carefully plan out their route. Obviously, from there, we'd have to get another boss. Coming up, there's news for Mark on the housing front. Just had a visit from Tenants Extra Support Team, um, and basically I was offered two properties. Leon's new job gets off to a disastrous start. It was quite annoying because I was actually looking forward to do that job. And Sean's dreams of working on the railways are in tatters. Packing the course in because it was too hard, and I couldn't get my head around it. In Knowsley, as well as struggling to afford the heating, 47-year-old Mark has been struggling with the stairs to his flat and says he's been asking his housing association to move him to a lower floor for the past two years. I'm at the stage where I want to move, I need to move, but I've got somebody saying I'm not allowed to move. But today, he's had some good news. Just had a visit from... to the... Tenants extra support team. Uh, the home visit was very positive. Um, and basically, I was offered two properties. A bit more paperwork to be done, but the principle is it's in motion. And hopefully, hopefully within a month, the move will happen. The two flats suggested are both on floors with direct lift access, meaning Mark wouldn't need to climb any stairs. I'm actually blown out the water. It's only been a two year battle, like. Been told where the properties are and once I could drive around and just see what I genuinely feel about the property, the area where they are. The flats are in a different tower block, but they're still within the same estate that Mark lives on now. It's only less than half a mile. It's going to keep me in the community I want to live in. Uh, it's easy the blocks. It just feels the same as where we are. I'm aware of a few people within these blocks anyway. Um, so I'm not going to a totally alien place. The heating issue will still be a battle for Mark, but he's excited about moving to a block where there's a centre for all the residents to meet up. In the hub of this, they've actually got a, a community centre, which we haven't got at the other end of the estate. It'd be nice to have a, a community centre hub where you can come together with other people and try and, you know, just have a better quality of life. These look a lot nicer than the last ones from Princess, trust me. Back in Ashton under Lyon, Leon was due to start a permanent job this week, cleaning in a warehouse near Manchester Airport. But he missed his first day. We had some misunderstanding on text messages. When Daniel got his text first, we both assumed that we'd be starting exactly at the same time as we asked for. I was actually meant to start yesterday, and Daniel was supposed to start today. It was whilst at his football coaching course yesterday that Leon discovered he was due in work, so rushed to try and get there. But the route he'd planned was from home, not from the course. From the city stadium, we had to go all the way up to Manchester Airport, so we had to get 101, which took us nearly like three hours, probably a bit longer. From there was a two and a half mile walk. Not knowing exactly where to go, and now late, Leon gave up. 
we thought the best thing was to go home and let them know tomorrow and explain and apologise for the convenience we've caused towards them. After he phoned to explain the mix-up, Leon says the employer decided it would be best to find other candidates who lived closer. It was quite annoying that we couldn't actually get there because I was actually looking forward to do that job. Start something new, meet new faces, get along with new people, work as a new team, you know, and just crack on with it and just earn your money, really. So that would have done me well to pay my rent, pay my gas, electric, food, and start gradually getting my rent rates down and my council tax and water bill as well. So it would have helped me out. I would have had a bit of spare cash towards my name as well to put to one side. Um, so well, I was quite disappointed in ourselves, weren't we, Daniel? Despite the major blunder, Leon is trying to remain positive. These bodies were actually meant to be for work, so we're just going to use it up for Prince's Trust. And he's now pinning all his hopes of a job on the football coaching course. End of it all, we get like teamwork skills, communication, etc. Uh, coaching. Well, you get a job in yeah, you can get a job in City as well, uh, depending on how reliable you are. Um, yeah, so I, really, I just want a job out of it, really. I just want to get my head down. In Stockton on Tees, Sean's had some good news. He didn't get sanctioned after all. I'm still getting my normal money. I don't know if I've been sanctioned, but I'm still getting my money, so put a smile, big smile on my face. I just checked my bank and all my money was in there. So I, 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 didn't ask, I didn't phone up and ask him why, so I just left it as that. After only six weeks on the cable engineering course, he's quit. I packed in the course in because it was too hard and I couldn't get my head around it. It was a bit easier than I'd probably have stayed on the course. His dreams of working on the railway tracks are over. But Sean's still convinced he'll turn his life around soon. I just need a woman now in my life. Build a bigger picture in my, in my life. I've got a date this weekend, so I'll see how things go from there. Still, it all works out for me.